one, eight, two. Some trick of fate had given this woman standing in front of me the same numeric address I had. And the similarities didn't stop there. She was slight of build. She had a nervous laugh. Her name was Angie, which was my middle name. And all throughout the Healthy Living Workshop, she kept nodding. Now, those of us who are nodders know we do it for a couple of reasons. We do it to sear whatever is being taught into our memory tracks. But we also do it for the teacher. We're saying, I support you. I hear you. I feel you. Now, Angie and I were in the same mental space at that point in time. We were in sync. Now, I told you we were sharing that same mental space, but we were not, however, sharing the same physical space. Some trick of fate had placed me at the 182 in the suburbs of Philadelphia, and here now on this beautiful stage telling you about my calling as a primary care doctor, Angie's 182 is very different. Her 182 is on cell block A, 15 minutes northwest from here. Angie is an inmate at Riverside Correctional Facility, and she was there on a two-year stay, and she had the unfortunate circumstance of being incarcerated when she didn't even know that she was pregnant. She had paid a steep price for this, so she was separated from her child. She had no attempts at our joy of, of finding a, a, a career aspirations. Um, all of those things, all those future things we think about a lot, were stifled at the ripe old age of 24. Now, most days, Angie would stare at her three walls and the cell door. She showed it to me. And how I would describe her 182 is arms width. Now, this was not my first experience in dealing with prisons. Up until five years ago, women in Philadelphia, any time they left the facility where they were incarcerated, they would be shackled. And this happened even when they were about to deliver. So those of us who have labored, those of us who have needed emergent care during delivery or tried to breastfeed in those first four days without any less than four hands know the impossibility of that, to be shackled at that moment. Those of us who've been there at that time, that time of new life, we know that we want to be perfect for this baby. We want things perfect for this baby. Um, and to be shackled at that time is not only shameful, but also a, a problem in terms of, of their emergent care. So I had the tremendous opportunity to be a part of the movement that banned shackling in, in Pennsylvania five years ago. Now, Angie was one of the lucky ones. So as we got to know each other during the course of workshops that were held at the prison, she told me about her daughter. She told me about the birth, that it was natural, that it was hard, but it was perfect. And she also told me about this evolution that happened when she was in prison, where she got, in her words, a new set of eyes. She was going to make do new, good decisions and be there for her daughter. Now, she'd also told me she had a ways to spend still at Riverside, and inwardly, I grew cynical and disappointed about how was Angie going to change the course of her life now? separated from her daughter. But she started nodding, and she was nodding for herself, but she was also nodding for me. She said the reason she was so excited about these nutrition workshops was because she had a plan. She actually really cared about nutrition. She thought she was good at it. And she had actually found a program to do by correspondence, whereby WIC, which was a federal program that supported her before she was incarcerated, she could become a WIC nutrition assistant by doing this program. And by coming to the workshop, she was actually getting good training and, and practicing um, the fact that she would be pursuing this job. So I said, that's amazing. That is so amazing. And through her excitement, I remembered why it was that I wanted to do this job. The reason I'm a primary care doctor is so that I can help people be the best they can be wherever they are. And as I've gone through this job, I realized that the trick of fate that places me here and Angie there is the same trick of fate that made Angie poor. And being poor is a disease. It is as crippling and debilitating and chronic and unremitting as the most morbid condition. And Angie is here to teach us that being poor requires our attention. It requires all fronts, 
Now, we have a term as doctors, triple therapy. It's what we call the three medications we use against HIV so that any one um, virus wouldn't mutate to one treatment. And, and poverty is like that. There is no one treatment. We actually need to attack it on all fronts. So five years ago, that front took me to Riverside to help change a law. Now we're working and trying to have inmates have healthy behaviors. And Angie is leading the forefront because I would like to prescribe a job for every single one of my patients. I would like to prescribe the tremendous power of belief, a friend, electricity, so many things that my EMR doesn't provide. But Angie's idea is that we would help have this pipeline. And wouldn't it be amazing if the federal programs that help low-income populations are then staffed by them as sort of ladder to self-sufficiency? That's her idea, not mine. So I am here to tell you that we are fighting poverty on all fronts, and I am here to nod for Angie. I hear you, I support you, and I feel you every single day. Thank you.